This memory came back to say hi recently, and though some of you here might enjoy reading it, I'm on mobile, so sorry if the formatting is weird, blah blah blah, you know yourself. A bit of context. This one happened to me a bit over two years ago. I think about it every so often and realize how bad this could really have gone. Pre-everything, I worked in a late night bar in the city, usually finishing up at about 3 to 4 a.m. or so depending on the night, maybe a little later, if the staff stopped up for drinks and chats afterwards. My house was across the river and up a steep hill on the north side and was about a 10 to 15 minute walk in a little cul-de-sac at the very top of the monster hill. At the time, I also had a housemate that people confused me for all the time because we had similar looks, both shaven head, wore a lot of black, etc. Around this time, she'd been saying that she felt like she'd been being followed by a guy who came into her work. She had like three different jobs at the time, so her schedule was all over the place. This is important later. Now, I know some of you will probably say, I'm an idiot, and you'd probably be right. But like many bartenders, I used to walk home all the time, usually by myself at these hours. The rent I was paying for my shitty room at the time was extortionate. I didn't have storage or even a fucking door, as well as bills piling up, and I was trying to save whatever I could because I had been hemorrhaging money on taxis, and I'd walk home so many times without major incident that I figured it'd be fine. I'm not a very large or particular fit person. So to say that, the odds would not be in my favor, and a physical fight would be an understatement. For work, I had this bottle opener utility tool thing with a small blade on it for cutting the foil on top of bottles. Sometimes on my walk home, I'd hold it in my hand, in my pocket, to feel a little bit safer. Anyway, this particular night, this place was deserted. I crossed the river and started the trek up the hill. Walking alone at night kind of freaks me out a little so I always used to power walk up the hill really fast. I'd be exhausted and a ball of sweat afterwards, but I'd be home. I got to the last stretch of the hill, which was a straight shot up to my place. It was a pretty poorly lit area, but I could see the cars parked at the top. As I was walking up the hill, I saw that I thought was an animal on all four legs scurrying across the road really low down to the ground and into my turn off. I thought maybe it was a neighbor's dog and just got walking. It scurried back out into the driveway across the road, then back into my cul-de-sac. At this point, I'm like, oh hell nah, that was some weird looking dog. And I'm pretty sure it was wearing shoes. It was now in the turn off I had to take to get home. And at this stage, I'm obviously like, that's not a fucking dog. So it was either wait around on the street at 4 a.m. by myself and hope it went away, or try to make a run past this dude who'd been running around on all fours in the dark. Being full of too much beer and not enough sense, I decided to make a run for it. I'd slap me too, but I can't take my own advice. Remember the little utility knife I, I usually carried? Yeah, me neither. Scrambling around desperately in my pocket, I realize I've forgotten it. Also, I haven't broken pace at all, so I'm literally just around the corner from the turnoff. I'm already sweaty and shaky from the long climb and just pretty fucking done. All I could find in my jacket was a bottle of perfume, one of those made out of chunky glass in the shape of a torso. I fish it out and hold it in my fist in case things take a turn for the worst. Use it as mace, you say? Nah. I'm going to break a fucking nose with this. I found the corner and there's nothing there. Empty path, not a peep, nothing. I figured maybe he was just on drugs or something and went for a run around in the field that led on to my lane. The gate was right by the corner. I walk on, my house three doors away, think I'm in the clear when this dude literally just strides out of the shadows, straight towards me. I don't know. How the fuck he managed to conceal himself so well, but it scared the shit out of me. I actually surprised myself because I lunged at him shouting, Jesus fucking Christ, swinging the thick bit of bottle down in my fist towards his nose. It didn't connect because I think I scared the shit out of him too because he saw a glint of something in my hand. He staggered just backwards and stared at me 
Google-eyed, just saying, uh, um, over and over, looking like a deer in headlights. I looked him in the face and said, what the fuck, man? And walked to my house, keeping an eye on him. But he just wandered off. I got inside and told my housemate about what happened. She went white when I described him, as it matched very closely the description of the guy who'd been stalking and making unwanted romantic gestures towards her while she was at work. We reckoned that this was the same guy, and he must have been watching her from afar, but confused me for her like everyone else, and thought it'd be her coming home at that time. It makes my skin crawl to think that we're being watched and tracked without either of us realizing. His reaction must have been when he realized he had the wrong mark, and for one would happily smash his creepy face in with a perfume bottle. Also, for anyone wondering, she tried reporting this guy's behavior before, but surprise, surprise, nothing could be done because he technically hadn't done anything. We just notified our other housemate, made sure the house was locked up like Alcatraz, and kept communication opened. Never saw or heard of him after that night, though. Nice one. Quadruped creeper. Let's not meet again. I'm on my phone, so excuse any mistakes. Keyboard warriors, I swear this story is real. You cannot make this shit up. When I was around 11 years old, 2014, my family and I had just moved from Tennessee to Texas. As my dad was working out a deal for a new job, my brother and I were homeschooled at the time, which meant we could move in with my aunt and uncle with no problems relating to finding a house in a good school district, but that is besides the point. My family is pretty close back then, and all the cousins got along just fine. We loved to do everything together, especially me and my female cousin Peyton. My immediate family, meaning me, mom, dad, brother, and sister, had spent the past seven years without a jack in the box. It was terrible. We were all born in Texas, so we loved it. But living in Tennessee, we had to go without it. Particular night, however, all of our parents had gone out to dinner and told us very specifically to not leave the house. We were to lock the doors after they left and play games or something. You might be thinking this is now becoming about an intruder, but I promise you, this is 10 times more bizarre. After the parents left, all the cousins got together and we decided that we wanted ice cream and candy. Not that that is important, but I remember Ben and Jerry's being the main target. So we devised a foolproof plan to sneak out and acquire the goods. Well, we thought it was foolproof. My older sister, Driver, my cousin Peyton, and all loaded into my dad's car that was left at the house and off we were to get the food. We should not have left on our way to the store to get the snacks. We decided that Jack in the Box sounded much better than some sugar, so off we went. The drive was full of Bruno Mars and Megan Trainer. How perfect does that sound for 2014? As we pulled up to the drive-thru, we decided that it was about three cars long and that we just should go inside and order instead. Wrong choice. When we stepped inside, there was one girl in the restaurant. She was short with a small figure and wearing winter clothes. So she looked completely ready for an outing. The girl asked the cashier for a water cup and proceeded to fill it with either Sprite or some other soda. I remember the guy at the register looking at her extremely confused, but it was late and he could not care less, I'm sure. When she finished filling up her cup, she drank it extremely quickly and started to turn around to throw the cup out and leave. I have an awful memory, but I do remember her eyes being wide open as if she had seen something scaring. At this point, we had been standing at the entrance doors the entire interaction just watching for whatever reason. We were just very nosy, but as she was walking out, I looked down and noticed that she was gripping a large butcher's knife. You guys, this thing was huge. It immediately my heart dropped and I heard my cousin go, oh my god, no way, no way, no way, or something like that. So the knife-wielding girl leaves the restaurant and we go on to order our food. 
talking about it to the guy at the register and kind of laughing it off, but also still very curious and confused. As we leave with our food, we see the girl crossing the street to CVS now. It was kind of late, but there were still a good number of cars driving on the road at this time. She did not look either way. She just crossed with ease, as if invisible. We brushed it off and assumed she was just doing her own thing, but after a while of eating some tacos and talking about how fun it was to be out without permission, we saw maybe a dozen police lights start to enter the CVS parking lot. Like I said before, we were nosy, so we decided to do what any nosy person does, investigate. We drove over to the CVS and we were stopped in the parking lot by an officer to be asked a couple of questions. My memory gets a bit hazy here, but I remember it was a problem because my cousin and I were both minors at the time or something about being minors and involving ourselves with the police was a problem. They asked us a couple of questions and just remember my sister and cousin explained that we had seen a girl wielding a knife in the jack-in-the-box across the street. So with that, they let us go and we hurried back home. A little bit later that night when everyone, parents included, was winding down for bed, our mothers called the three of us into one of the rooms in the house to talk about something. I don't think any of us realized that they knew what we did. They set us down and calmly asked us what we did tonight and I think we lied. But I don't quite remember. Either way, it was useless because he knew everything, even what we did not know. Our moms told us that someone on Facebook had posted about three heroic girls that knew information about the girl in the situation that I'm about to explain to you. Heroic? Hardly. All we did was answer a few questions. Nosy? That's more like it. They told us that the girl had entered the CVS and grabbed a woman by the hair and proceeded to hold the knife to her throat for several minutes before the police could show up. Apparently, people had tried to get her off, but it was useless. After all, she had the weapon. The girl was also apparently screaming and just being very violent. But as that was so many years ago, I can't remember much detail. I know that's not an end of the world, nail biter story. But how bizarre is that? To this day, I think about how easily it could have been one of us with a knife to the throat in a Fort Worth jack-in-the-box or how easily someone could have been killed. But also, if it wasn't for the girl, we would have gotten through the night with our foolproof plan. So hey, jack-in-the-box knife girl, let's not meet again. Also, we never got candy or ice cream only PTSD. My cousin and I now laugh about this all the time and refer to it as our witness protection program moment. So the other day I was at the clinic for a prescription and because it's an injection, I can't just pick it up and leave. I have to stay for a bit. So I walk in the clinic and see my friend's mother and we chat. Keep in mind, I said her name and she said mine. We have addressed each other by name because we have met a lot. So I get my prescription, she's already gone as I'm leaving, and I mention it to my friend when I get home. Fast forward a couple days, and my friend says to me, so I don't know who you spoke to, but it wasn't my mother. So I'm confused, and she's confused, and we call her mother, and her mother confirmed she was never at the clinic. Now I go through all the possible, and this is where it gets unsettling. I don't have anyone else in my life to compare her mother to. Her mother doesn't look like anyone I know, and her voice and accent that I don't know anyone to have. One of the reasons she's such a unique person to me. I said her name and she responded to that and she said my name. If it was something she didn't want to know she was, to know she has me on Facebook and could have secretly told me, hey, this is what's going on. Please don't tell my daughter and I would have kept my mouth shut and she knows that. At the end of the day, I can't come up with the explanation for who I was talking to. I still can't, and I'm sure I never will. Hi everybody. Sorry this was a short video. That's three weird stories. I have family in town this weekend, and I will not, unfortunately, be doing a Friday video this week. I will definitely be doing one next week. This week, I only have two videos for you. The one I put out on Monday, and the one I'm putting out today. So I hope everyone has a very amazing weekend. I love all of you so much and I'll see all of you on Monday.